How to make a Stuart triple expansion engine run, part 13. This is how I usually fit cladding to Stuart model steam engines. It is a simple job, but only if you make the parts fit correctly and mark out the holes in the right place. For this job, I enlist the help of a Christmas card, but a birthday card would work just as well. Ideally, the card that you use to make the template needs to be the same thickness as the metal that you're using for the cladding. This introduction sequence is very much out of sync. This is an initial test fit of the piece of cladding to see if the slots are in the right place. More about this later. Here is the original piece of cladding that was fitted to the engine and it's made from anodized aluminium and although the anodizing is hard, the metal is soft. This was an old Christmas card that I found and it's quite a nice colour. It's the perfect thickness and has the rigidity that is perfect for the job I'm about to do. I'm using a Sharpie felt tip pen which is not ideal for this job but it will make marks that are not exactly right to the size of the original piece of metal and there's a reason for this I'll explain as I go along. Had I have used a sharp pencil then the line would have been much more accurate relative to the size of the original panel. But I do like a margin of error, hence the sharpie, which means I will possibly cut this a little bit oversized to start with. I've marked the positions of the slots required for the part to slide into position. And as I'm cutting these out using a sharp pair of scissors, I am aware that I have to cut outside the black lines. But when I cut out the outside part of the card, I will cut on the inside of the line, and with a bit of luck it should work. Feel free to practice cutting out things on a Christmas card before you start doing this. There is a distinct technique in using a pair of scissors to cut out pieces of card just where you want them to be cut. If you foul up the first time or even the second time, just find another Christmas card and practice for a while. This looks worse than it is. The card actually bends as you rotate the scissors to cut along the top side of the slots. Once again, it's important when cutting the outside part to cut on the inside of the line rather than the outside of the line. And here I'm purposely doing it wrong to show this principle by using one of the pieces of baking tray that I cut accurately. As a template, I can make sure everything's correct. Time for a bit of an interlude. One of the holes in the cylinder that's designed to take a bolt to hold the cladding is a bit of a mess. It's uh, anything but round, and the reason for this is the drill collided with the stud that unfortunately went too far into the casting. I need to plug this hole, but it's full of oil, so the best thing to do is to drill it out, make it slightly larger and oil-free, and then fill the resultant hole with some JB Weld. This hole isn't very deep, there's a stud in the way. So I'm not going to use it for any part of the cladding fixing, what I'm doing here is sanding the area around the hole with some wet or dry sandpaper just to clean it. And now I'm going to use some JB Weld. I really do like this stuff. And I always use it for filling jobs. I don't mean like car body filler, this stuff is very strong. Using it is very simple. You put the same amount of the two part mix on a piece of card or any sort of surface and then mix it up until it becomes a uniform grey colour. I've used a pencil to mix this up and apply it, and it seems to be quite a useful tool. And once I've finished the job, I simply clean the pencil. Although I did use a small piece of card to clean across the front so that it was flat. The hole is now officially filled, and it's back to the cladding job. I've fitted my card template in place and located the positions of the mounting holes. Whilst holding the card in position, I push through the holes using a scriber. So with a bit of luck, all of these holes, with the exception of this one, which is in the wrong place on the casting and isn't required anyway, will be in the right place. But I can't drill a hole in the cladding at this point, it's too close to the edge. When I remove the cardboard template, you can really see that it is impractical to put a bolt into this hole at the extreme bottom right. Now it's time to transfer the positions of the slots onto the cladding itself. This steel baking tray cladding is very easy to mark out. Because it's not anodized, the scriber doesn't skate over the surface, 
it digs into the paint and you get a nice clean silver line. Now it's over to the bandsaw to cut out these slots. If I had to produce a lot of this type of cladding, I would make a punch for this job. But for just two pieces of cladding, it's hardly worth it. I just make multiple cuts with the bandsaw and then using a pair of pliers, remove the teeth. Then, using a needle file, I file it to shape like this. This is very thin metal, so you even have to be careful with a needle file that you don't bend the metal. Likewise, when removing the teeth with a pair of pliers, as shown here, make sure you don't grab the edge of the slots as you do this. It takes longer than you think to snap off these teeth. But there's no rush, just keep at it until they've all gone. Bear in mind, I do have plenty of these pieces of metal should I foul up. But I'm trying not to, and if you're careful, it should be OK. It's the drilling of the holes that's the crucial part. Be really careful that you don't accidentally grab the edge of the metal. Bending the main area of the cladding at this point is not recommended. There was a small amount of distortion around these slots, and I got rid of that by using the handle of a small pair of pliers, which flattened the cladding without marking it. Here is the initial fitting of the cladding piece, and it's looking quite good. But I haven't marked out the exhaust outlet yet. I have the position for the hole, and I wrote HP at one end of the piece of Christmas card to show me this was the high-pressure cylinder end. The drilling of the holes in the casting for the exhaust flange are a little bit strange, to say the least. And with the original cladding fitted, you can see that there was a bit of a problem getting the holes in the right place. So what I've done is marked the position for the correct holes using my scriber. As you can see, there are two small arrows scratched into the metal. And in due course, these were transferred to the Christmas card. I know it looks a bit odd, but have another look at the casting. It matches this quite well, I think. In this clip, I've temporarily refitted the Christmas card template, and I'm double-checking where the holes are. And when I push the scriber through, it's more or less in the right place. I think this will be OK. I'll try the lower mounting hole. And yes, that seems OK too. Multiple punches with the scriber put a hole where the exhaust port is. The screwdriver stuck in the top hole is just to keep everything in position. Now I need to make the holes more accurate, and I'm going to use this thing. I bought a set of these, and they were incredibly cheap. And they are quite useful for enlarging holes in metal, and just as useful for cardboard. Once I'd cleaned up the positions of the holes in the cardboard template, I transferred the positions of the holes onto the cladding, just by using a scriber. This job can be very stressful if you just bought the parts from Stuart Models and only have the correct amount, too. I cut plenty of pieces from the baking tray, so I'm not stressed in the slightest. If this first panel doesn't work out, I'll make another and continue until both sides of the engine have beautiful looking cladding. That is it for this episode, more to come in the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.